In our study this week, I have something very unusual to talk about, and that's money. Hi, I'm Pastor Dean Hemphill, and you're watching 10 Minutes of Truth. Today I'm going to read from Matthew, the 10th chapter. I begin in verse 6. When Jesus gave marching orders to the disciples, and this is what he said to them, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, or staves, for the workman is worthy of his hire. At this time, I have a very unusual study that's on my heart. That's why I'm bringing it. I'm not trying to slander any ministry or anyone serving God. I have just read the basis of the marching orders that Christ gave the disciples. He said, don't worry about anything. I provide it all. The last couple of months in Sunday school in our church, we've been studying Ezra, Nehemiah. We saw even there that God says you've got to have money. When you go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the city, the walls, the temple, you've got to have money. And money was furnished through other people for them to have what they needed to have to rebuild the city and the walls and the gates. The Bible teaches about tithes and offerings. But here we find, he says, you receive freely, you give freely. We are blessed in our country and the world today to have so much Christian television that reaches the hearts and lives of many people, shut-ins, hospitals, nursing homes. Even my own life is blessed tremendously from Christian television. But in the, in the place of all this wonderful ministry, you find several times each day those who have a 30-minute segment, an hour time limit, and all they do is to ask for money. And they have the same bottom line we can share the gospel around the world. It's almost sometimes, I almost laugh when I watch some of these people. Give you some examples. I saw one the other day says, I'll send you a key, a key that you can use with instructions. Instructions now are to send him some money. He said these words, I quote, put this key on your keychain you have for your car and you'll get a new one. He said, put the key on, key on your house keys now you have, you'll get a new house. And people will do this. There's one that says, I'll, I'll send you miracle spring water. I saw one years ago, so I'll send you some soap, bathe in this soap, follow the instructions, and you'll be healed. And all of this is successful. They have coming in millions of dollars annually from people who do not have Bible knowledge of truth. Again, the Bible teaches money. I'm not, I'm not saying that ministry shouldn't ask for money. It takes money. But for those who just market the gospel, and some of these people are filthy rich. They have planes. They have homes. They have automobiles. They have antique automobiles. They have so much stuff, so much money. And people every single day will send them money. Now, please follow me. Why don't these people say, send me money and you'll be blessed, tell, tell people this. Go across town where you live and find a needy family who needs some groceries. Help them with their groceries. Pay their utility bills and you'll be blessed. Why don't they say this? Go to a home across town that's had a tragedy and help them out financially. Why does it have to go to them? How about saying, go to your church, the storehouse that you depend upon. Give them your tithes and offers unto the Lord. Why does it have to come to them? You never hear the words, this will work with other people. 
It always has to come to them. And it's a prosperity message. And the ones that are prosperous are those who bring the message. They're the ones who prosper off of people's lives every single day. Now, some that's watching this week's uh, uh, 10 Minutes of Truth has said, Preacher Hemphill, you are far fetched in what you're talking about, but I'm not. I'm not. I know in my spirit every single week, and I love Christian television. I'm blessed by many ministers of the gospel and many singers, and it takes money. I'm talking about those every single day of all week who say, send us money and you will be blessed and we'll share the gospel around the world. And the gospel is not going around the world. Every single day is the same thing. Send us some more money. So you have to prayerfully seek God in what you give. To any church, any ministry, anyone, you have to prayerfully seek God in what you give. Now, in our text today, Christ told the disciples, you don't have to have gold or silver or brass. Matter of fact, listen, when it comes down to a ministry who's really seeking God and serving God, I believe God will supply the need some way, somehow. It will come in. You don't have to beg and say, people, send us money and you'll be blessed. God will provide a ministry of his, I believe, what they need. I have pastored now for some 42 years. In my first church years ago, we began with 12 people, count my four. God blessed that place for several years as we began to grow, souls being saved. One week, our director of missions came by the church. He saw our board and the offerings that came in. He said, Brother Hemp Hill, what kind of stewardship program do you have? I said, what are you talking about? How do you have the offerings you have here uh, in this uh, pretty small church? I said, I just preach Jesus. And I believe if, if Jesus gets invited to somebody's heart, he'll get the bill for it. I think it all goes together. And God blessed that little church, and, and we, had a, we had a bus ministry. Everything was paid for. We put in new furniture, new carpet. Everything was done over those years, and God blessed it because God got people's hearts. Same thing in the church. When it comes to a church, though, and, and ministries from some television stations, you have to draw the line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one more example. You may, you may send a lot of money for many years to some television minister. You may do that a long time. When your life changes and death comes into your family, they will not come. If you want to, if you want to minister, you're going to find a local church near your home you'll find a local, a local pastor. You may find from that church some food that comes your way. It will not come from a preacher on television who's begged for money all your life. It will come from some church. If you want some church to help you, or you may want to say, we'll do it by ourselves. And some, they do that. So this week, from my heart on 10 Minutes of Truth, I'm speaking, I believe, truth to many people. I don't want you to be deceived by anybody, including us ministers. I don't want you to be deceived by a scripture from the Word of God out of context that some use. Pay your vows and keep it. So many things they use in the Bible, uh, the widow's mite and the, uh, the widow's sticks and the last meal that she had, all these things they use all the time to convince people, send us some money, and you will be blessed. We'll send you a key. We'll send you some soap. We'll send you miracle spring water. We'll send you all these things. Just send us some money, and you'll be blessed. Today, I promise you, I know from experience, tithes and offerings, God will bless you. We have his promise. And the ones of heaven are open upon our lives so richly, we can't contain the blessings. That's the principle of God's word. That's God's promise. For every Christian, not just when it comes to money, pray about who you support. Pray about how God leads you as you give the money that God has blessed you with. So today, from my heart, from Clark Chapel Baptist Church, I've shared with you I believe truth. Until next time from this ministry, I pray you have wonderful days 
as God leads your life.